Hello, my name is Ken Kogan with TheBIMGuys.com and in this video we're going to discuss how to use Navisworks Freedom and adjust the cut planes to look at different elements. Let's jump in. In the previous two videos I talked about how to get around and then how to measure. In this video we'll be adjusting the cut planes to look at different areas, etc. We'll take a look at two things. We'll adjust the existing cut planes and then use the box tool. So in this instance we have a situation we're dealing with We've got some sanitary lines that are dropped down due to the uh, the length of the line, and we have this duct we're trying to fit underneath it. So we're, we're this is the area that is of concern. In the previous videos, we talked about other options of moving the duct in different areas. But what I want to do is take a closer look at maybe what's above and beyond these areas. So as I zoom out, you'll notice that there's a preset cut uh, in the model, and you'll see that red line that's showing up. That's defining where the cut line is. You can turn that off in settings if you'd like. Now, what we're going to take a look at is adjusting the cut plane. Now, the first cut plane we'll take a look at is we're going to go up top and you'll see selection tools. Now, uh, uh, sectioning tools, excuse me. You can also uh, manipulate items. So, in sectioning tools here, you'll see we have these planes. Now, usually the BIM moderator or BIM coordinator will have many of these planes preset. So, you won't have to do a lot with them. You just need to turn them on and adjust them. Now currently the only cut plane that's being active is the cut plane 1. If I turn on cut plane 2 you'll see that everything disappears. Not to panic, it's just that cut plane 1 and 2 are intersecting each other or too close. So to, to adjust these planes you hit the move button, you turn it off, then you hit it again and it shows up. Now if I start to drag down, which see how you start to see underneath? So in this model the cut plane 2 is underneath. It's, the, it's closer to the ground and cut plane 1 is actually on top. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit and let's say for instance we want to look under the model but we don't see we don't want to see all the way down to the pile so we set a cut plane 2. Now I'm going to switch on over to cut plane 1 and then I'm going to go ahead cut plane 1 is active and I'm going to hit move turn move off and then turn move back on and it, and it centers it on the screen. So that's the real trick. It, when you're moving around you're like wait where am I? I don't I, don't, I want to move it turn move on, turn it off, turn it back on again, and usually it'll go to the center of the screen. Now I can grab any of these arrows and they will move the cut plate. Now in this instance, since we're cutting horizontally, if I grab the yellow and I drag it up, you'll see how it's actually adjusting and it cuts right through now I'm in floor. Now I'm going up to floor two. So let's say I was working on this, I'm wondering why is there so many sanitary lines in this area? Well, I could grab this little yellow arrow and drag it on up, and I can say, oh, we got a whole bank of restrooms sitting above us. So that's why we have a lot of that stuff going on. So if we're wondering why that's happening, there it is. So that's how we move this element around. So again, let's try that. You may be looking at something, and you want to adjust the cut plane. So go up top, and you can see here how this, this duct here is being cut. And you're like, hmm, I don't want to, I want to see how it's going to actually show. So go hit the move button, and sometimes it'll show on the screen, sometimes it won't. So you turn it off, turn it on, and then it should be on your screen. And then you can click on the X, Y, or Z. I'm going to grab X, I'm going to drag it upward. And you can see how that duct is coming up, and that fits right underneath that seal, as you can see. So that seems to work. So that's how we adjust these cut planes. Now there are other cut planes that people use. For instance, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Um, I don't use them that often, but some people use the other ones, like plane 3. You see I cut through the building sideways. Uh, plane 4 cuts the opposite direction. So let me go ahead and turn some of these off because it's getting too crazy. So if I turn this one off, see it cut through the building this way. Now notice I don't see the move icon again. And that's okay. I'm going to turn the move off and I turn the move back on. And notice how we see the, the graphic again. Now the blue is going to the one you're going to probably use. See I can cut this slice. Now if you want to get all SpongeBob fancy pants, you could then go turn on, let's say, plane three. So now notice what we have. Now we actually have uh, a cutting in both directions. Now at this point it gets kind of crazy. Whatever plane is active, you see it says plane three. Again, turn off the move, turn the move back on, there is the plane. And you can then adjust it. So if you're trying to do something where you're showing a, just a minimal amount of stuff, you can go ahead and, and do that there. Now it does have a rotate, and, I'm, and if you use the rotate, what it's going to do, it's going to jack your planes up. But this, if you grab the plate, you can actually rotate it like so. See? So not a fan of that because all it does is mess up your planes. So I'd recommend not messing with that. Now, at this point, we zoom in and see how I can see a real defined area. 
So let's say I wanted to discuss the floor, uh, excuse me, the ceiling, the duct, and maybe the floor above. So by adjusting these planes, you can move in and see exactly what you want to see here. Now I'm going to slide down the building a bit because this is the area that's not, that area is not as, impor as important to the further down. So by playing this little plane game, I can go to plane four, I hit move, and you see that's that one over there, and I'm thinking I'm fine with that one. I'm going to go to plane three. Plane three is now active, and I can slide it down, and I can watch as the duct changes elevation in these areas, and then comes back up. So I can look at that. I'll zoom in close so we can see it in action. And I can move these, <clears throat> and you see how the duct drops down. You can see it's actually interacting with the ceiling now. So that is going to be an issue. So I can zoom in now, zoom in. Remember all the, the, the tricks. Select an object that becomes the center of rotation. Shift middle mouse button, and I can spin around. Again, I can pan, and now we can look at this here. So these cut planes, as we turn them on, just as fast as we turn them on, we can turn them off. So many of the times, I'll have all the other planes turned off. The only planes I run usually plane one and plane two, because if I'm on a third floor, I'm not worried about stuff on the first floor. So what I'm getting here is this strata. If you want to think of that way from science class, notice I'm, it's just a strata of just this stuff. Another trick is to look underneath, and you can see all the ceilings and see if any duct or pipe are busting through that area. So it's another quick visual check So to use that strata. So that's how we are able to use the planes. Now there is another tool that's pretty, uh, pretty handy. Uh, I find it quite useful is you select a piece of duct or piece of element that you're curious about. Underneath planes, there's a tool that says box. What box does, it takes the selected objects and boxes it. Let's take a look, hit box. Now see how it throws the box in here and you're like, whoa, what's happening? But if you zoom out a little bit and you start to spin around, notice that it created a box around the elements that we're uh, working on. So now I'm gonna take this box and by using this, see I can, I can crush it down or move it. See how I'm seeing my area now? So see it boxed it and it built a box around it. You don't see 10 by 10 by 10 showing all the related elements. So now once you've moved, you can move the box. See it's moving up and down and I can look at it different ways, but it's, it's isolated that, that element. Now this is when all of the, the sliders come in handy because see I can slide left, right, back, forward, up, down to see what I want to look at. If you want the box to be larger or you want to do uh, make it um, adjustable, you'll notice I'm picking up all, all the way down to the pilings. Let's say that's not important to me. I'm going to drag this box up a little bit and I can use the scale tool. Now when I use scale, what's going to happen is it's going to crush the box. As you can see, it's crushing it down or it's expanding the box depending on the direction you pull. So this box I find very help, helpful, especially if I just want to do a quick screen capture and send it to someone. With this screen capture, they can see what's happening in this area. They can also see what's happening in kind of in the related ones next to it, but they're not being overwhelmed by everything. So that is the, the, the scaling, and it gives you the ability to stretch it. And then you have move. And again, it will move through the elements here. Now, <clears throat> there is the rotate, but I never really use that much. And then the final one here is we're gonna, so we've got the object selected. We'll hit fit to selection. And you see that just brings it down to that one little element. It's almost too much, so but that's what that element does. So now at this point, I can start to move it around, okay? Or we can then start to scale it again. So if you really wanted to get in on that object really tight, you can see how it totally isolated it down to those two or three items. And as before, if you don't want to see the graphic anymore, hit the button again. See, it turns it on, turns it off. So quick little view there. And now we can zoom in and we can see really closely about what's happening in this area. So if I need to do a quick screen capture and send this to someone, this is a good um, way to really totally isolate everything that's going on and we can show what's happening. So that's how we can use these tools. If you want to go back, the easiest way I find is just go back to a previous view. If you've got saved views here, now you can go back and turn this thing back to planes and it'll go back to planes just like you were. Or if you have a favorite view, just go back to that like so. Now. As you're working through here, you may decide that, man, I wish I had, um, I had, could save some of these views. Now, in this application, um, you don't have the ability to save these viewpoints, okay? If I right-click over here, you'll see it says viewpoints, and then it says sort and help. This is, again, a viewer, uh, Navisworks Freedom Viewer, so you can't do a lot of editing and manipulating. But there is a quick tip that you can do. Just zoom in on the area that you want to s capture. And down off my screen, I have a little a tool, and it's called Snippet. Okay, you can type it in your little search engine here up in Windows. And it's called a snipping tool. This is a handy little tool. It's, they've got a new one coming out, but for the most part, this does what I need. 
I hit new. I then just draw a rectangle around what I want and then it's clipped to the clipboard. I can then send it to an email or save the file. So it's a quick way to take a snapshot of something. And even if you wanted to highlight something, use the highlighter, all the pens, and note it up. Okay, so some quick tips there. So there we go. That is how we can get around and adjust the plates in the viewing in this application called Navisworks Freedom.